Well, good Tuesday morning. I uh, want to just look at a passage of scripture that I think uh, uh, certainly will uh, will minister to you, be a blessing to you. In 1 John chapter 3, uh, John says, For this is the message, this is in verse 11, For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. And he goes to great lengths in chapter 3 to talk about uh, how one of the true marks of a follower of Christ is the love that we have for our brothers and sisters in Christ, and uh, even goes to the to, to the degree that how can we how can we love God whom we haven't seen, um, and and somehow love people that we have that, that we and not love people that we have seen. But but at any rate, he, he he uses a contrast right on the heels of saying that we're supposed to love one another. He said, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother, killed his brother. And wherefore or why slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. And so he sets the table. He said, now listen, we're not to be like, like Cain who, who didn't love his brother. And the reason he didn't love his brother, the reason he did, did ought unto his brother, that he killed his brother, is because, because uh, Abel did right and Cain did evil. And Abel's good works, they, they were a conviction uh, un, unto Cain. And so Cain, uh, he took his brother's life because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. But then he says something interesting. He says, marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. <laughs> um, it, it is becoming more and more glaring uh, that there is there is an emboldenment of the world uh, against the church, against the things of Christ, against the things of the Lord. Um, uh, it's interesting. We uh, we have uh, have had this dynamic going on for a little while now. That uh, that legislatures they uh, they seem to see the necessity to uh, to pass uh, legislation that uh, that uh, that deems certain crimes hate crimes and uh, puts a stiffer punishment uh, on those crimes. And, and uh, you know, I, I can understand some of the sentiment. I, I would say this. It's interesting that, uh, that the punishment for, for such egregious crimes isn't already uh, adequate uh, to, to keep people from committing those, those crimes. And it's also ironic that that we put a greater value on some lives than we do on other lives. Uh, we put a greater value on on some individuals than we do other individuals, and and it would just seem to be contrary to the whole thing that they uh, they at least uh, uh, say they're trying to uh, they're trying to to write or or that they're trying to make everything even and level when. Uh, you can't have even and level if we elevate one over the other. But at any rate, there's there's this uh, this whole aspect of of certain hate crimes. One thing you're never going to find when it comes to hate crimes is uh, uh, anything that is done against Christ or His Church uh, is never going to be deemed as a hate crime. And and uh, because the world's always going to be at enmity, they're going to be at odds uh, with the church. And I think we see more of that. Uh, at least uh, being revealed, um, uh, being evidenced, uh, the later we get in God's economy. It, uh, there, I'm, I'm sure we've always had that sentiment. It was probably more veiled uh, back in, in, in years past, but, uh, but certainly is, is becoming more and more revealed and more and more, uh, more, and more out front uh, the later we get in God's economy. But, uh, but one of the things that, that we're told is, is the world is going to hate genuine believers. And, and there's a couple things he talks about, about this hatred uh, that is real, uh, that, 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 by the way, no law on the land is ever going to counter that, that the problem that he's speaking about in our text, the world hating the church, hating, hating believers. Uh, he talks, first of all, about the saints. And the saints are my brethren. Those are the ones that have been redeemed, those that, that are living a holy life. Um, and he says, you are the ones who are going to suffer this, this persecution. You're going to be the brunt of that, of that hate. Now, I will say this. There, there are probably a number of folks that, that would include themselves in the church culture of our day uh, that they're not worried about persecution coming uh, because in all reality, uh, they, they, they're probably never going to see persecution. 
Uh, you know, Paul told Timothy, yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Uh, the, the, the problem with that is there are a lot of folks who, who, who like to be deemed part of the redeemed, uh, but they're just not interested in the living godly aspect unto it. Uh, boy, they like the, the concept of grace, and we all do. Thank God for grace. Without grace, we'd all be, uh, we'd all be relegated to hell. Uh, but, but there's also a responsibility that comes from that grace, and, and there are numbers of folks who, uh, who, who aren't interested in the responsibility of living godly, of living righteously, and, and uh, it, is, it is certainly a, a time where that is becoming more and more apparent that, uh, that folks aren't interested in living a holy lifestyle. They're not interesting, interested in, in, in living godly, and, and uh, uh, they're, they're not going to be the ones who suffer persecution because their lifestyle is no different from the lifestyle of the world other than they check the box on Sunday morning that they've been to church. Uh, that's about the only difference that, that you see between them and anybody else. They, uh, they still live the same way as the world. They, uh, they, they, they give uh, God slight, slightly less time than, uh, than the world, or slightly more time than the world does. And so, uh, so he tells us that the persecution is going to come. He guarantees it for those who are the redeemed that are living godly, those that, uh, that really are living a life that is consistent with Christ because that lifestyle of the redeemed, that life that is committed unto Christ, surrendered unto Christ, and living contrary uh, to, to the, the lifestyle of the world, it is, it is an affront, it is a conviction uh, unto the lost crowd. Uh, when, when they look at somebody who is genuinely living for Christ and following him, and their life has been transformed by the power of the gospel of Christ, and they're living, they're living above sin, beyond sin, they're, they're not still entangled in sin and in this world, Christ has set them free. They're free indeed, uh, Jesus said in John 8. Uh, that kind of lifestyle that is surrendered and yielded unto the Lord, uh, it brings conviction uh, on those who, who are living in sin. They look at your life and, 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 and it, it, it makes them consider and think about the reality that they're not where you are and that one day they're going to stand before God and they're going to be accountable before him. And so, so our lifestyle uh, it says it says a multitude unto the world, and so he talked about the saints. He also talks about about the sinners, and that would be those who are included in in the world. Uh, th those are the ones that are the haters. The uh, the world we live in it's it's not a Jesus friendly uh, world. Uh, matter of fact, uh, the world is is contrary unto it. You see it in so many things. I I, I was just reading a blog recently, and some comments that were made uh, after the blog and. And it's interesting how, uh, how, how so many want to voice their, their anti-Christ, anti-Christian sentiment and uh, uh, how, how the church is the problem and anybody who, anybody who promotes Jesus or, or anybody who wants to try to follow Christ, we're the problem in the world. And uh, it, at any rate, um, the, the problem is uh, the mindset of those who don't know Christ and the mindset of those who do know Christ, they're, they're going to be completely contrary. They're going to be in opposition. They're going to be at odds um, because they come from two different sources. Uh, one, one is focused on Christ. One is focused on self. And, and, and so you're going to have this, uh, this, uh, this opposition. You're going to have this, this, this uh, combat, if you will. And uh, uh, the, the sad reality is that uh, they're going to be those who, who hate uh, the church, and they hate Christ, and they hate followers of Christ. And so he talked about the saints, which are the brethren. He talked about the sinners, uh, which are the world. Uh, but, but then he gives a, a, a surprise, if you will, because he begins that verse in verse 13 by saying, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Now, don't be surprised if unsafe folk don't like you. Don't be surprised if unsafe people hate you. Don't be surprised if... If, if the whole system of this world runs counter unto you. Uh, marvel not at that. Um, you know, it's interesting uh, that uh, the world we live in, goodness is hated. Um, but, but our text tells God's people not to be surprised if we're hated for Christ's sake. As a matter of fact, Jesus told his disciples early, in, or early on in, in his earthly ministry that, uh, that they would be hated and persecuted uh, but it wasn't personal. It wasn't about them. It was about him. And the reason they would hate them is because they hate him. And the reason that they would persecute them is because uh, they were seeking to persecute him. And so, uh, so we, we find that if, if, you, uh, 
if you try to live for the Lord, don't be surprised the persecution comes. As a matter of fact, uh, you can expect it. You can anticipate uh, that it's going to come. And again, if I understand what, what Paul said to Timothy, he said, yea, and all, not just some, not just part of the crowd, but all who live godly in Christ Jesus shall, not might, but shall suffer persecution. Um, I, none of us want to be hated. Uh, but, but you know what? It, if, if, if we're being hated by people that have no heart or no desire for God, that's not always a bad thing. I, I do want to make the best impression for Christ upon them. I do want to try to reach them with the gospel of the Lord, but I certainly don't want to compromise. And I don't want to portray the wrong thing before them and give them the wrong ideas what Christianity is all about because if they buy into a false gospel, they're just as lost as if they buy into no gospel at all. And, and, and so don't be surprised if the world hates you. And quite honestly, uh, it's going to amp up, I think, the further we get along in God's economy. But understand this, you're on the winning side. And ultimately, ultimately, we are going to prevail in Jesus Christ. Do everything you can to reach folks that are lost. Shine as much light as you can into the darkness and, uh, and pray that God will use your life and use your witness to reach people with the gospel uh, that they might not have to be contrary unto God and the things of God, but they can be in the same shape you're in. They can know the Lord and love the Lord and, and have a wonderful relationship with him. Well, God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful day. Let's pray together. Father, we're thankful for everything you do for us. I do pray, Lord, you'd help us to recognize the spiritual combat and battle that we're involved in. Uh, Lord, I, I pray that you'd help us to continue to, to love those that are in the world. Help us to love their souls. Help us to be fishers uh, for men. Help us to do everything we can to, uh, to live right for you, that we might portray uh, Christ before this lost and dying world. Uh, Lord, help us to understand that they're, uh, they're not going to pat us on the back. Uh, simply because we name the name of Christ. Uh, Lord, if we try to live for you, if we try to honor you, if we try to be consistent with your teachings and be a genuine follower, uh, we can expect persecution. Uh, but Lord, that's okay. Help us just to be faithful unto you. And Lord, I do pray you'd use our efforts. Use our efforts to impact and influence others. Use our efforts to encourage one another in the things of the Lord. And Lord, I do pray that you'd use our efforts to bring glory and honor unto you because Lord, you're so worthy of our glory and honor. We love you. I just pray that today you'd be exalted through everything we say and do, for we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. Have a great day.